Hi everyone, it's KK. I'm really excited to be with you today. I started this course because there are so many different reasons that you may want to launch a virtual studio or virtual business, and yet there's not a lot of clarity on steps on how to get there from point A to point B and then to full monetization and profitability. I've got a great group of people joining me today, sharing with you their case study of how we got them up and running in 24 hours, and they're making a ton of money off of this platform. Going virtual has been one of the most exciting parts of their business. And I think their message is if they can do it, anyone can do it. So stay tuned. There's a lot coming up. What's unique about what you guys have done is you didn't just jump into, um, let's just get it out there any way we can. You were very thoughtful. You were very deliberate. And we turned this thing around and made it live and you screen very quickly. But before that, you had production schedules. You had there are things yeah. that people don't think about necessarily about starting a virtual studio. And so I'd love for you guys to share maybe a little bit of what the resources you needed uh, to be successful, because I think this is where, and I know Pam had a lot of like operational focus on this, where Kelly's very creative and she's kind of the brains behind the machine, is like, well, what are the tactical things we needed to do to get this done? It wasn't just like, we'll build it and people will come. There was a lot of things you had to do to lead up to even having videos to be filmed. So where did you guys start with that? Like, what were the resources you knew you were gonna need from day one? It's kind of interesting, but the people who actually film us know the work, so, they know exactly well, I think that's where so important, Kelly, because you said something that I think is essential for most people that are um, considering doing this. There has to be some cinematography behind what you're sharing for it to be impactful enough for people to spend their dollars on actually buying into your online studio. So that's key. Like you were able to source and find a team that actually knew the nuances and the complexities of what you offer to the point of making sure that that came alive on camera. That's really good. Yeah. That, that was key and also just visually in general, I mean, our studio is very clean and it mm -hmm. has a feminine vibe, but uh, there's not, it's just got this thing when you walk in, everyone's yep. like, is this, is this a studio or is this so like a design, you know, it has this feel. So we also want to make sure that they understood the vibe of the whole brand and that that was going to show on film. It's kind of um, like having a, an instructor or someone working at the front desk that's never worked in a boutique studio. It's like that would never work, you know? Like if they're used to sitting at the desk at a big box and they just let people scan themselves in, could you imagine having them at the London Method, like welcoming people in and they're just like reading a book and like, yeah, get, come in when you can. Versus yeah. like really putting that level of thoughtfulness behind every aspect of this studio, much like it's a real in-person studio. And actually something unique about this is Pam, you're much more analytical, much more process focused. You can speak a little bit to the resources that you guys prepared for that are more technical, like making sure you had automated emails to go out, making yeah. sure you were promoting to people. Tell me a little bit about that level of resources that you guys did, even after you did kind of the visual and the design. Well, we definitely had help from this really awesome gal, KK. Oh, she's great. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird people with that name. <laughs> um, yeah, after we uploaded our videos, we um, we did have, we sent out um, emails to all of our clients. Got a good amount of uh, email list, you yeah, know? Interest. Yeah, this yeah. is a good, actually, I'm gonna pause and expand on that for a second. You guys had demand. Just like you wouldn't open a studio or a third location or a second location without true demand for your business, you guys had clearly defined demand. All we did next was make sure that we kind of took that demand and gave it a very clear platform to gather more leads and gather more interested people because you had a clear demand for this. And that's a really yeah. good point. Yes, absolutely. And, um, you know, we also, um, you know, had a, a special going in the beginning. We knew we wanted to price it a little bit above what was going on out there because we have a special technique that no one yes. has, you know? So yes. we, um, you know, we believe we have something special and so we had to price you know, it accordingly. Price That's it a accordingly. great operational point. It's like, it's not just building it and then people will come, it's building it, pricing it, promoting it, automating it. All those things kind of built up this amazing studio that you guys created. A great point that you make is that part of that promotion, 
part of that marketing and part of that brand is actually staying true to your pricing and making sure that it's appropriate for your target market. Something I love about the London Method is you have a very specific prototype of lady um, that typically kind of buys into what you guys offer. It's so much more than just a workout. Actually, it's funny, it's on your shirt right now, Pam, but it's so true. It's not just a workout. <laughs> it's a brand. It's an um, it's a company. It's something that goes beyond just going in and getting a good workout. To be honest, people can do that a lot of different places. So when we thought about pricing this amazing, unique, original method, I think it's a great point of clarification that you guys really took the time to understand the market, just the virtual market, you already knew the in-studio market, mm -hmm. and then understand what are the unique complexities that we bring to the table? What are the things that make us uniquely excellent? Um, because we're not just another bar studio. Not that there's anything wrong with being another bar studio, but it means that we need to be very specific about who our client target is, what we price to them, what we offer to them, and how we engage with them with our brand. I think one of the things that your pricing, and Kelly, you just talked about it, really showed us was people had intrinsic trust very early on. So as a marketer, we knew that because your uh, annual offering was being sold almost at a faster rate than your month to month because they already had that trust that you built through your marketing over the time that you were preparing for this. That's huge. And we, and they, we wanted to really showcase like what it would feel like if you walk into our studio on yeah. the screen. And so, yes. but now, you know, one of the things I think is really important when you own a business, what I've learned from being a small business owner is you, you have to move with the market. Like anyone in theory, anyone can essentially offer something online at this point, but there is such a difference between the trust and the intrinsic community that you've created that make this really successful from a promotional perspective, because that's really what matters is being yeah. able to not just have something that's visually um, aesthetically beautiful, but something that sells, something that monetizes. Speaking of that, I'd love to talk a little bit about the platforms that we looked at. I think it's really important because um, you guys had looked at a ton of platforms. I had worked with a lot of platforms and we had a lot of difficult decisions to make there, specifically because there was some big platforms that originally um, I think was the perception of where the direction we wanted to go and we found that there were some things we hadn't known about them That were really important to know before you start uploading videos to their platform Tell me a little bit about what platforms you considered and what you ended up deciding on because of the things that you learned I think there's a lot of great platforms out there. There's a lot of um, ones that you see people using uh, We we ended up choosing you screen which we had heard about from um, someone else in the industry that was using it and uh, just raved about Uscreen and I hadn't really ever That's heard of it. That's how I feel now. We, yeah, I, I hadn't yeah. really heard of it. We had done, um, we had used some other platforms to kind of test out uh, yeah. the program. We did a few beta tests um, prior to actually launching. What did we and use, Vimeo and what else? There was something we used, else. Um, we used Vimeo and then I think we just, the one of our beta tests was on Vimeo and then we we've told we've played around with YouTube, yeah. but um, which also has some great features too. But I we just ended up in the end cho choosing UScreen, and I'm really happy that we yeah. did because it's it's so user friendly. It's so um, it's really easy. It's very automated. Uh, the other programs we used, we kind of there was more maintenance on our end required, Absolutely. and I am not a tech person at all, so I can attest to that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, sometimes but I'm that's like, the benefit like, of using something that doesn't force you to be a tech person. Because actually, I think most of us inherently are not tech people. And so having to start a whole new studio and learn a whole new platform is really intimidating when you're trying to make this a real business and make it profitable. And so yeah. I think you're, you're dead right about this. It needs to be really easy and easy to monetize, which is, I think, the thing that gets overlooked. Like anyone can upload your beautiful photos and videos and make it look good. And it's one real thing different I do to sell it. Yeah, and you screen one of the big selling points for us was that you you have contacts with your clients. A lot of some of the the programs, you're not allowed to talk to them or you can't get their emails. And it's like yes. for us, because like you said, our community is so strong and it's such a personal relationship. We we weren't we were not willing to do that. We we wanted to be able to be in touch with them, and you screen does allow that. And that's that was a huge uh, a to huge me that was the game us. changer. Like if I'm yeah. thinking this out of your perspectives, I remember that kind of being the big shift when it was like, wait, 
our clients aren't our clients. You know, I think about it now as renting versus owning. Like, what do you mean? We're renting our own clients. So we're going to spend all this time and money marketing to clients, creating beautiful videos, having a brand that's ours, and then we're kind of just renting it virtually. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. fit the boutique element of what you guys do, especially you guys. But I think most brands and most companies in our space can kind of relate to that idea of like, I need to be able to contact my clients. I need to know who signed up for a trial. I need to know who's struggling uh, to complete their trial. I need to know who's getting kicked out of the system and who's um, you know tech challenged and may need me to go in and make sure everything is set up for them. And do that. And, by and some people might not want that. You know, some people yeah. might want it to be the other way. But for us, being that it, it, we wanted it to be like a version of our studio, but a virtual virtually, studio, a true studio. So we wanted to have the same access and the same, you know, try and build the same relationship with our virtual studio that we have yeah. with our real studio. And I really feel like because there'll be more interaction between us and them, which I can't Absolutely. wait for because I am a people person. I feed off energy. So when I see that they're loving it and having a good time like actually there it just it makes it so much better for me so virtual yeah. is the game changer for a lot of businesses um if you think of it this way it's the future and you guys are ahead of the future <laughs> well i think there's Let's something really cool to being a first mover i'm actually going to share my screen really quick so here's what I think is really unique about being a first mover. You really, in a lot of ways, have led the forefront of best practices for launching a virtual studio and launching it right. And I mean this not because I helped you guys do it, because I believe so much in what you guys do as a method and as a brand. It's because you were meticulous about every aspect of launching the studio, just like you were meticulous about every aspect of how high is the bar in the in studio, uh, in person studio. Um, where will people walk in? What door will they come through? Like, I just think there was so much thought behind your branding and mm -hmm. the use of your company um that really speaks a lot to your success i'm looking here and just kind of sharing um your new screen site this is your on-demand platform and i think there's just so many little nuances to this such as having like truly branded photography things that actually make sense for your business wasn't just snapped on an iphone um having like wording and simplicity in your messaging that basically just allowed people very easily very quickly to be able to essentially buy as quickly as possible, join as quickly as possible, and experience the London method. Um, your pricing really was fair, and what I like to show with that join page is just how simple it was laid out. It was as simple as having a free offering that started right into a monthly payment, and there was an annual offering for anyone who wanted to join um, for the year at a severely discounted rate because they already knew it was going to be amazing. And I think the simplicity of how this was set up is actually one of the things that I, on the technical side, really liked about Uscreen. I actually pulled up just the back of the admin area to show one. Mm -hmm. key aspect of it, which is the customization. You can literally choose the theme that best fits the vibe of your studio and then go deeper into that by making specific changes, which is what we did, to match and customize every aspect from the coloring to the typography and especially the content. Now, those are things that are not built within your screen. You obviously had to have that or have someone who does that capability like what I did. But I'll tell you, it makes a huge difference from these cookie cutter kind of like every platform looks the same virtual studios that I've seen. And so being a brand that's kind of so specific in how you market yourselves and how your method is offered, um, what was one thing that you would share? Like if someone's on the fence about how you set up your platform and why you chose Uscreen, what would be the number one thing you shared with them? Because I think this is huge. Like looking at all these options and making it specific to your brand and having it fully customized. Notice this is the LondonMethod.tv. Notice this fully speaks to you and not any other company. What would you say to them? What would be your number one piece of advice? I mean, for us, everything, it had to be user-friendly on the other end, but also on our end. So it really was the Good point. best choice for us because we had, again, tried other things that were that required so much maintenance either on our part or so much babysitting on the other side. Yeah. And I, I mean, with the first beta test, I was literally up 
like doing the studio stuff all day and then I was up all night working on the online and I almost we almost didn't do an online because the beta test was just like so much work wow. so yeah I don't even know if I ever told you that but like I was literally up all night like every night just because so, I, I I want it to work for people and so I'll yeah. just not sleep to get it to work and as you know <laughs> but I literally I literally cannot tell you how like seamless this program is I mean it's yeah. it, there really is very little maintenance we we film our videos we have them edited and we upload them and then if anything if anyone needs little things here and there use screen takes care of it and if they don't we, we can't but it's literally very automated Pretty systematic it's very systematic and yeah. um, there's no I mean I am just a huge fan of you screen to be honest yeah. as, as this a, made me a huge fan like just to be super transparent it was not uh, a platform I had heard about either not a platform that I was super um, excited about for any reason or not it just didn't come across um, my desk or your desk until someone recommended it and I think it says so much about their platform that it's so organically grown because yeah. it really has made a very laborious process actually something that can be attained in a very short period of time so yeah. I love that you gave us that view into you know your virtual studio. I'd love to close by talking about the future. Uh, what's the future of the London Method? What is your vision for the next step? So now you've conquered an in-studio element. You've conquered virtual. You know what can we look forward to from the London Method? Um, you know, just really reaching more people. So these platforms have been insane for us uh i really feel like this technique is something that everyone should do for their bodies to stay mobile and and not only strong but also it's a healing technique so yeah. the older, you could do it from really young which i wish i had found it sooner so just kind of getting it out to as many people as possible and this is a huge kind of point of clarification so actually launching a virtual studio hasn't cannibalized your in studio in person uh, offerings, but now it actually has provided you another layer to grow even further. Yeah. I think that's one of the most unique aspects of being serious about going virtual versus just dabbling in it or throwing it out there to kind of see, you know, what sticks. Being intentional and being super proactive with your virtual studio is going to lead to more success in person and online. Way to leave it too. It is all about collaborative community. Whether it's yeah. the bar community, it's the world who needs a lot more fitness and a lot more self-care. Um, I think that's what's really unique about what you guys are doing. There's a mission behind it that is so selfless of you and Pam, and is so much about the people that you're able to help connect, heal, and just grow in their skill yeah. sets and fitness and their skill sets in life. So I think that's really cool. Yeah, I know. We we have a woman right now in our, our virtual classes that has never been able to come to the studio. She's had like 13 surgeries on her body and she can't do a lot of things. And she's like literally in her house right now doing our videos wow. every day. And she's just like, I never got to your studio because I didn't really understand what it was about. Yeah, there's yeah. something really unique about being able to offer something to someone right now at the time that they need it. That's yeah. just really special for every aspect of life. Whether you're a new mom like Pam, whether you're someone who's got physical concerns where coming into a studio may be intimidating. It may be something they're physically or time-wise incapable of doing and having premium content to go and try something new, buy into a community and be a part of something bigger than yourself. That's why we do it. That's what Boutique Fitness is all about. And Definitely. that's why what you guys are doing is the future. You're just kind of paving the way. So I want to thank you guys so much for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing your method and how you got everything virtual um, online and doing great. I think that's a great story of inspiration for a lot of studios out there. And uh, if you're interested in trying the London Method, uh, you can go to the LondonMethod.tv and see Kelly and Pam doing some hella cool exercises. Uh, we can't wait to have everyone try it and meet everyone. Awesome. Virtually. <laughs> Meet you virtually instead Meet you of just virtually. in person. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Thank you guys Thanks, so much for doing this. I really yeah. appreciate it.